Rin and I are here to show you a great Valentine's Day treat that you can share with your family and other people that you love. So Bryn, how about you tell us about this recipe? Where did you find it? So a friend in my class named Aiden G. It was library day when I found this in the library. I couldn't find the book that I really, really wanted and he helped me find this. Yeah, and we had already talked about making some special Valentine's Day treats, right? Yes. And so you were so thoughtful, you saw this and you came home and you were so excited to show me that you had found a book with Valentine's Day treats. And I thought that was so cool because I love when we get to do decorations and recipes together. And Valentine's Day was the first category. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But we looked at the recipe and it has some not so good ingredients. Yeah. Yeah, what is it? What are some of the not so good ingredients? It's hard to read upside down, Red right? deckers and candy. Yeah. Some of the toppings, like I'm sure you can see in this picture, we all know that those are pretty much pure sugar, and they have food colorings that are chemicals, and you even have a friend at school that's allergic to those colors, right? From kindergarten. His name is Brody. Yeah. But we figured out a way to make a delicious red velvet brownie that doesn't have gluten, it doesn't have refined sugars, and it doesn't even have any artificial colors or chemicals. Exactly. <laughs> Bryn's really excited. She actually, we had to put this together and so she already had, you know, some practice brownies. She was really getting into the role. <laughs> <laughs> she did a really good job. And what do you think? It was delicious. Good. All right. So how we are going to make these brownies, you want to um, shift your chair so that you can put these together? Yes. Awesome. So we are going to start with, and I'm going to be looking at my recipe quite a bit, but we are going to start with the butter. Yep, go for it. Good job. And this, I have grass-fed butter here. Um, in my other videos, I know I've talked about my love for grass-fed butter, but just again, if you haven't seen those, I really like grass-fed butter because it contains vitamins A, D, and K2. Here, I'll give you a spatula. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I really like that over regular butter and especially over margarine because if you're going to have fats, you need to have fats that are going to serve your body and your body needs those vitamins for your brain and bones. Good job. Now we have the cocoa. And of course, cocoa is delicious, um, but you want some fun nutrition facts about it. Cocoa is also rich in magnesium and antioxidants. So, you know, that's probably a lot of the reason when people say eat a bunch of cocoa or chocolate, it's good for you. Um, they typically mean over 70% cocoa, but, you know, to each their own. And then, let's see. Ah, the sweetener. So, Bryn, you can mix in the coconut sugar. Um, for this recipe, you could either use um, two, so I have two sweeteners here. I have monk fruit. How do you mix in? Oh, so can you put that down? Oh. oh, good job. Okay, and then we'll lock it. And then, do you wanna? Two? Yeah, let's try two. Good job. That's great. So we used coconut sugar because I didn't have enough monk fruit to use for this. But I really like monk fruit because it's no calories. It does not affect your blood sugar. It has vitamin C and it tastes like sugar. Um, so I think this is a really good option for people. And then also I really like coconut sugar. Um, it contains potassium and 
Compared to regular sugar, it's going to be lower glycemic, meaning it affects your blood sugar less. So it's definitely a better option. All right. Good job, Bryn. Thanks for mixing that up. And then we're going to add the eggs. Here, I can, you don't have to lift it up. Can you just pour that in the side? Good job. And Bryn cracked these eggs all by herself. What? Yeah, I'm going to put the cover back on. Oh, that's the lock. Can you move, can you do this one on this side? Thanks. And whether you get pasteurized eggs or regular eggs, eggs are a great source of choline, which is really good for your brain, especially for babies. If you are pregnant or you have a growing child, um, it really helps their brain development. And so I am a big, big lover of eggs. And then, does it look smooth, Bryn? Yeah. Okay, so we'll stop that. And then, I had the vanilla here. Oh, we have a lot of stuff going on. Oh, we don't have to lift it up. Can you just put it back down? Okay, Oops. I'm gonna quickly add our vanilla. It's just gonna give it some good flavor here. And then, nope, how about you do the color? And I'm going to quickly, um, how about you start pouring it in? For the red, I use most of a little bottle like that, but for the blue, we might not need as much. I used up all the red doing my test batch and kind of our display batch so we're using blue for this demo batch but what I want to tell you about the colors is I really like this India tree brand and you can get it on Amazon all um, the products I talk about and the recipe will be on my blog functional-foodie-nutrition um, but India tree is a really good brand because all the colors are from plant sources and so if your kid is sensitive to colors or you just don't want to be feeding them chemicals, this is a really good, really popular brand and they work really well. So, Brynn, now you can blend that up. That's the lock. Just do that. What do you think about the color? Do you think you want more blue or is it good? More blue. Okay, well here's your bottle. How about you add a little bit more? And then while you're doing that, I am going to start slowly adding our flour. And the flour we're using instead of wheat flour is one of my newest favorite flours. It's cassava flour. And I really like it because if you've ever wondered about changing a recipe to gluten-free and then a lot of them are big flops because the texture is weird or the taste is weird, Cassava flour is one that you should try because it is one that you can substitute for wheat flour one-to-one. -one. It doesn't create any weird textures or flavors. And even if you don't care about gluten, it is lower calorie and lower fat than wheat flour. So I definitely think it's worth a try. Um, let's put the cover on because especially when we're doing flour, you don't want it to like poof up in our face. Mm -hmm. All right, so you, can you turn that? Just on. Whoa, Bryn. <laughs> that was way too much. Yeah. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, I can just add like some more flour. I'm sorry I did that. <laughs> we all make kitchen mistakes. I've made a lot. I had accidentally gone on to 10. Well, now now you know better how to just stay on the, the two setting, right? Mm -hmm. You see why that's important? I was like, <laughs> 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 I'm a man. <laughs> All right, so we're getting that mixing. 
And as you saw, you should start it on a low speed. See, I'm making a mess too. And you should also add your flour slowly for several reasons. And um, we'll add, I think in the midst of everything, I forgot to put in the coconut milk. And you can use regular milk. It's really not a big deal. I really like coconut milk. Bryn likes coconut milk. We opened it up earlier and I caught her drinking from the can because she really likes it. We make the banana ice cream with coconut milk, hot chocolate. Oh, I already, I already did it, but thank you for holding that. Um, I really like coconut milk because as far as a plant-based um, source of iron, it's pretty good. And it's also really high in medium chain triglycerides, which is good for your brain and your metabolism. So for anybody that wants to boost their metabolism, you might want to give that a try. And we'll just mix in this last bit of flour. It's just going everywhere. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Especially because we already made some delicious brownies to show you. So you can see that we have some mixed up and and you want to give that a taste. No, no, no. We don't put our mouth on it. We just take a little bit. We don't want to put our mouth on the kitchen utensils we're already using because that's kind of a food safety issue. Good. I'm glad you like it. All right, so you want to scoop that into the our dish like we talked about. And Brynn and I got special heart-shaped cupcake dishes. Which are now covered in flour. <laughs> yeah, but that's going to be okay because it's just going to bake right into the brownies. Um, and so we are just going to put that into our pan right here. And then what we would do is we would put this into the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. And Bryn, how about, we'll, we'll finish these up in a second, but I want our friends to see your cool idea for how we are going to put these together. Yeah. And we have these right here that they're a little covered in flour, so I'm sorry about that. But you can see this one is a one that we already made. And that's not how Bryn's going to do it. Bryn's going to do it a super cool, special way. And make sandwiches. Yep. So tell us what you're doing, Bryn. I'm cutting them in half. And then I'm going to put some icing in between. Mm -hmm. So you're going to make some brownie sandwiches? Uh-huh. Good job cutting that. All right, so let's get some icing in there. And while you're putting the icing in, I'm going to talk a little bit about these sprinkles that we have. So, typically, the sprinkles that you would have, they're, of course, pretty much sugar. But then, also, if you read your label, you will, of course, have colors. And you will also have this ingredient called confectioner's glaze. And from being in... I'll say from doing my time in the food industry, I know that confectioner's glaze is basically lac beetle. And that's probably not something you want to be, it doesn't sound very appetizing, we'll say. So if you want healthier options of sprinkles, the India Tree brand of the color that we talked about has some really good options. I couldn't find those at Whole Foods 
when I went shopping there, but you can get them on Amazon. And again, all these links will be in my blog post. But these are what? Let's do organic sprinkles. And I found those at Whole Foods. And they are just evaporated cane syrup, tapioca starch, and plant-based um, plant based colors. Hey Bryn, do you want to put some sprinkles on your sandwich? And then yeah. We'll do that real quick and then I'm going to ice one up too. And we'll enjoy these. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope that you found this helpful either as just a recipe to try with some people that you love on Valentine's Day, or maybe you found some ideas for how to make some recipes in your life a little healthier. If you have other recipes you'd like to see kind of healthified, comment in the um, comment down below and let me know. And we hope that you guys have a great night and that you plan a wonderful Valentine's Day. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks. <laughs>